Hey guys, what is up? Matt Coop here, aka MODC Architecture, and welcome back to another video. So today is my week three of my video series, and I am super, super excited to be telling you about what has been happening at the Architectural Association from my perspective. So, so I am in a tutor group, and we were set an initial task of reading a brief. Now, this brief was sent to us on the Saturday, so we had to read through it over our weekend, along with an, H uh, an HTS reading sent by Georgios, my HTS tutor for my class, Long Live Flexibility. Now, this was a little bit of work to do over the weekend. You know, nothing too bad, but um, the reading by Georgios was sort of like 10 pages of architecture reading and then about a 31-page extract on the economics, on the past economics of... Um, of the sort of what labor workforce and the reading actually was pretty tough um because it was about something that i'd never really sort of i guess read about ever um but i suppose in that sense it was really interesting as well and we got told about how it would link to architecture uh, later on on the monday and we we went through this lecture gave, given by him which really backed up the reading that we did and it was really really interesting and what we got from it is that the flexibility within companies um, in terms of the work would relate to architecture later on in our lecture series and our reading. So I'm still waiting on how the two really link together. But um, yeah, it's 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 going to be an interesting ride for sure. Back on to design, though, we met on Tuesday and I was and we um we were put into design groups or, or little groups of three. And uh, these these groups were sort of to be for the next two weeks. And what we were tasked on doing is selecting a, a design studio that we really like. So myself, uh, Tara and Sherry, who I'm working with, um, we, de we decided to uh, elect uh, to review Design Earth. Now, Design Earth are this sort of very th um, sort of experimental um design group or <clears throat> design unit, I think in MIT, actually, um, very interesting, in my opinion. And what they do is they sort of tackle real world issues, but sort of draw in a slightly playful manner. And the way that the reason they do that is because a lot of people shy away from the drawings that people do to really address these real life issues, and sort of don't pay attention, whereas Design Earth do it playfully, and uh, sort of add a little bit of interest to the drawings so that people sort of pay attention and can read the sort of underlying connotations to the work. And it's really interesting, in my opinion. Um, so, yeah, we, we chose that, and we chose to sort of study this uh, particular project that they did called Cosmorama, which has three three elements to it, Mining in the Sky, Planetary Arc, and Pacific Cemetery, all very interesting uh, concepts. Mining in the Sky, looking at the overexploitation of uh, natural resources and questioning whether some natural resources are even asked to be touched and looking at a political point of view of um I think there's this clause in the US um in a, in the US somewhere um in in some legislation which says that US citizens can mine extraterrestrial asteroids or or beings or whatever um not beings sorry extraterrestrial bodies um such as rock, etc., like asteroids, uh, for their personal gain. And as far as I'm aware, that's true, but I, I don't know. I need to do some proper research into it. Um, but that was claimed in this Cosmorama project, and so I'm going to go off that. I'm going to take a naive approach and just go off really um, sort of analysing the project. Um, and that was really... I suppose that's sort of a, a few quite uh, real-world issues, political sort of um, exploitation of resources and then just the general exploitation of natural resources. And then the planetary arc is looking at how sending animals to space is cruel and um, sort of most animal pro um, most animal space um, space launches have uh, been unsuccessful, really unsuccessful and you know often ended in really sadly the animal dying. Um, and then moving on to Pacific Cemetery, is looking at this point called Point Nemo, which is um, sort of this this point which is void of all land, sort of like the, I think it's 14,000 nautical miles until the nearest known land point. So it's basically the sort of one of the four most remote places on the Earth. I can't remember what the other three are, but there are another three. Um, and so 
This place is void of pretty much all life, apart from bacteria and crabs on the bottom of the seabed. And basically what this point is, is a place for space junk to be dumped, aimed and dumped in, um, because it won't, it will affect the least amount of life. And it's probably some of the most toxic materials that we produce um, sort of from a man-made point of view that isn't to do with, you know, nuclear waste and stuff. So I guess people thought, why not just put it here? And um, so Pacific Cemetery builds on the idea of uh, building a new territory with uh, that recycled material. Um, and by new ter territory, I mean new land, because what we're going to be assuming in this project is that sort of things aren't going too well for the human race, rising sea levels, etc., environmental damage, you know, the gist of things, and it's gotten too bad, and so we need to create this new train to house uh, refugees, uh, climate refugees. Uh, and climate refugees are people who have been sort of unearthed from their homes due to quick environmental impacts, such as rising sea levels or extreme weather events. So, yeah, that, that was... um. That was sort of uh, my Tuesday and Wednesday. My Wednesday also included uh, some reading for my second HTS, um, my second HTS class with Ed, which is called Tracing the Archive. And what we're looking at here is a uh, sort of how archival um, keeping has really affected architecture and the sort of architecture of archival or the architecture of archives. So yeah, that's quite interesting actually. I, I wasn't one hundred percent sold. But you know what? It's, like, it's really interesting. And my meeting with Ed on Thursday with the rest of my class really solidified that as we learned the history of the archive dating back to 100,000 years, potentially. I think in um, in India or China, there was a this cave drawing of a, of a goat. And you could argue that imagery is a form of archiving. A lot of people just uh, sort of assume or just highlight that words or sort of written texts are archives. However, the archivist within my tutor, Ed, has sort of outlined that all archiving should be considered sort of true, and that can come through imagery because then archiving goes a lot further back in the past when you have when you take into consideration cave drawings, etc. So yeah, and and you sort of went through this period. And you, you, and the lecture that he gave basically was talking from 100,000 years to now, um, where we sort of see this progression of archiving through images to your earliest form of um, manuscript, uh, to the ancient Egyptians, to then the uh, ancient Greeks, and then to the Romans, and then through all the way to, um, I think, around the uh, 16th century, where there was a bit of a a lull, I think, because of um, uh, a war which was going on. I can't remember exactly what it was. And then leading up through to the sort of history, which we assume correct today, uh, from the 18th to the sort of 20th century, where we've really fact, where we've really sort of discovered these archived research or these archived um, these historical archive documents, and then formulated a sort of history of it uh, for the past 150, 200 years. And now the archivists are questioning whether this is 100% true because there's a lot of bias uh, with the people who discovered all this historical archiving. There's a lot of bias which has been basically allowing them to lead it back to, oh, we were the creators of archiving, we're the greatest, or we were the greatest civilization, that, um, or we were the smartest civilization that knew that archiving was so important. So yeah, it's quite interesting, that entire history. And... What's interesting then is how the archiving affected architecture because you started off with just sort of libraries and places being used for archiving, but then archival architecture actually developed and uh, was needed and was necessary. So, yeah, it, we were kind of just starting off that journey of really understanding uh, the hat. Um, sorry if I drone on, by the way, because I find these topics super interesting and you're just getting sort of like 100% me on the camera. And yeah, I'm really sorry. So like skip along a bit if you're not finding it that interesting because I'll move on to the next thing as swiftly as possible. Um, so Friday, uh, Friday was our second design meeting and we had chosen Cosmorana, our design group, and presented it to our tutor Maria with a few drawings here and there of sort of like what we uh, were interested in within Cosmorama and sort of our analogy of it. And so then we were tasked with revisioning the project. Now, by revisioning, what we mean, by revisioning, what we mean is um, 
sort of like taking the story and then adding our own narrative and our own twist to it. And that's really interesting for me because it kind of allows you to take your perspective on the project and really sort of flip it and or or do whatever you want with it. So um, we took this uh, sort of idea of making it a proper story, uh, like a movie, and we sort of created this series of drawings which looked almost like how a film looks um, with the individual pictures in film. Um, so yeah, that was quite fun actually but that leads on into week four so i won't go too much into detail with that it's a really experimental and interesting start to really get the sort of the cogs whirring as it were uh, really get the brain going and sort of designing uh freely you know not being constrained by real world sort of or constrained by the reality of the real world it's sort of allowing you to really push the boundaries of what you can do and design and think of um in an experimental format so yeah that's my update for the uh that's my update for the week i really hope you enjoyed this video thank you so much for watching uh let me know what you think of my week and whether you think it's crazy or whether you think it's really cool i'd love to know your thoughts and um whether you have any suggestions for what i should be working on as well like within the stuff if you see something that i haven't please let me know and i'll i'll have a look into it and see if it makes it into my design project so thank you so much everyone for watching i really hope you had good time and I really hope you have a good day or good night or whatever time you're watching this. Um, I'll see you in the next one. Thanks and goodbye.